Hi guys, and welcome back. In this video, I wanted to show you a situation that I actually just accidentally came across. This was totally unintentional, but it was an issue with my Kubernetes cluster where the uh, root cause was actually related to a CNI. So I had installed the Calico CNI onto a cluster running on Amazon's Elastic Kubernetes service in your AWS account. And then what I noticed, the behavior that I specifically observed was that when I run a kubectl get nodes command, which is actually shown right here at the very top of this documentation, if you run kubectl get nodes, that will show you just high level information about the nodes inside of your cluster. And I had noticed that these nodes were actually showing up as not ready. And so that indicated to me that any pods that I would try to deploy out to the cluster, even though I could still run kubectl against the API server just fine, if I was to deploy a pod or create a replica set or create a deployment controller that uh, basically creates a replica set for you and the replica set then schedules the pods onto your nodes, that those pods would basically, basically just never get scheduled because there were no healthy nodes inside of my Kubernetes cluster. So I wanted to show you what that looked like. I've since resolved the issue so that issue no longer is occurring, but I wanted to show you just kind of what behavior I was observing and then what I was able to do in order to fix it. So one of the commands that you can run aside from just kubectl get nodes is called kubectl describe nodes. And kubectl describe, regardless of what type of resource it is that you're describing, if it's a node, a pod, a service, a deployment, uh, you know, pretty much anything like that. When you run describe instead of get, the describe command is going to give you a ton more information that uh, about that resource that you are looking for. So when you run kubectl get, that's going to just show you um, some high level information. But I'm just going to search for not ready here in my history. And what you're going to see is that right here when I ran a kubectl get node, I want you to focus on just this highlighted section right here. You can see that the two nodes that were running in my cluster, both of them were showing as not ready. And uh, you can see the age. One of them was spun up 18 hours ago. The other was spun up more recently. And that's probably because I was using spot instances in AWS for this particular cluster. Um, it just helps you to save hourly spend, but you do risk uh, downtime of certain nodes. And so, you know, continuously, AWS will kind of rotate those out for new nodes. So that's why you're seeing that difference in the node age. Uh, because they're just part of an auto scaling group. So the auto scaling group will just automatically spin up new nodes to satisfy the desired number of nodes in my cluster. So what I saw under the status column is that each of these nodes was reporting not ready under the status. You can see the version of the kubelet that they're running right over here. And you can see their host name here, which I, I didn't give them any custom host names. This is just the host name that they were spun up with. So in order to kind of investigate this issue and figure out what was going on at a more deep level than just seeing this high level status was to describe the nodes. And something else that I can actually run as a diagnostic command, they don't mention this in the documentation, but you also want to take a look at the pods in the kube system namespace. So you want to do kubectl get pods on the kube system namespace. And one of the other behaviors that I observed after just the nodes being in the not ready state is that the core DNS pods right here were not running. And if you recall from previous discussion in the last video and in one of my other skills, the core DNS pods are not going to spin up unless you've installed a CNI into your cluster. Now, typically when you create an EKS cluster in a managed uh, Amazon Web Services account, the cluster will automatically set up the VPC CNI for you for AWS. So that way your pods are able to get IP addresses off of your software defined network, your VPC in your AWS account. However, in this particular case, I had remembered that I had installed the Calico open source CNI onto these cluster nodes, and then I had later removed it when I was trying to troubleshoot a separate issue on this cluster. So as soon as I saw these core DNS pods weren't running, I immediately, something went off in my mind and said that there's probably something wrong at the container network interface level. So keep that in mind, because we'll come back to that. 
But then also I saw that this snapshot controller component also wasn't running. The cube proxy is running just fine. Um, so that's basically just the component that does the, the load balancing on, on the nodes, as we discussed in the last video. But um, I could see that Core DNS and snapshot controller weren't running properly here. And so I wanted to kind of figure out what was going on with these. And so I actually did a describe before I did a describe on the nodes, I did a describe on the pods that were failing to be scheduled because I thought maybe Kubernetes will tell me something about why this pod couldn't get scheduled or why it couldn't get executed on one of my worker nodes. And obviously, because these nodes are in the not ready state, I know that um, there's a problem with my worker nodes, but Core DNS should actually be running on my master nodes, right? So if even the master nodes are having a problem, then that's really indicative that there's kind of a cluster level problem rather than just purely being a problem only with the worker nodes, right? So there's a much bigger issue at play here. So after I described the pod details, this is kind of what that output looks like right here. And you can see that we get a ton of detail about the pod. So we can see the pod labels. We can see things like the annotations here. We can see the pod status, which again is just pending. It should be in the running state, but it's just pending. We can see the configuration of the pod, the liveness and readiness probes for it, the mounts for file system mounts, the image that it's using and all that. And all that stuff is defined by EKS, right? Because our, our um, master nodes and, and core DNS are being managed by the EKS service. But as we continue scrolling down, you'll see under the events section right here that it says zero of two nodes are available. Two nodes had a taint. And as you may know, in Kubernetes, a taint is a way for you to kind of put a mark on a node so that you can uh, have pod affinity towards certain nodes. So if you had a, a taint, for example, that said, you know, the, this node has four cores or a, a different taint on a different node that said, okay, this node has 32 cores or something like that, you could actually use that taint to control the affinity for your pods. And you could say on the pod level, I want this pod to gravitate towards a node that has a taint with 32 cores, or I want this pod to gravitate towards one that has four cores. And so you can kind of use that to not strictly schedule onto a specific node, but you can schedule onto nodes that have a particular attribute, or in this case, a taint. And so in this case, it's actually a built-in taint to Kubernetes called the Kubernetes.io not ready taint. And so the pod cannot tolerate, it, can, it cannot be scheduled onto a node that has this particular taint because it has an anti-affinity to those pods or an anti uh, toleration right up here. So you can see the tolerations right here and there's a specific toleration for not ready. So that doesn't really tell me anything new because I already knew that no nodes were available, but at least it tells me why this particular uh, pod was not able to be scheduled. So as we continue to scroll down here, we would see the uh, so we've got described nodes here, and this is what's going to give us a lot more information about the nodes themselves. So you can see all the nodes have labels right up here, and um, then you've got different uh, conditions for the node right up here and events. And so this is actually where I kind of zeroed in on exactly what the issue was, because if I search for the text not ready, you can see that right here it says that container runtime network not ready, and then it says reason network plugin not ready. And then it says, again, message docker network plugin is not ready. And it specifically says CNI config uninitialized. So that tells me that there's some kind of problem with the CNI. And I had already removed Calico from this cluster. And so I kind of assumed that everything would kind of fall back to the AWS VPC CNI. However, for whatever reason, that didn't actually happen. So what I was able to do ultimately to resolve this problem with the CNI is to look up documentation about the AWS VPC. So if I just head out here and search for AWS VPC CNI install, there is a document here that describes managing the Amazon VPC CNI. And if you scroll down a little bit here, there's actually a command that you can use with the open source EKS CTL utility, which is typically how I deploy a cluster in EKS. It's just a very easy way to deploy one without having to uh, 
um, you know, go through the AWS Management Console manually. And so if you run EKSCTL create add-on, and then you specify your cluster name right down here, and of course the name of the add-on that you want to install is the VPC CNI, then if you run this, and of course you got to plug in your service account um, role ARN, you can just get that from the IAM service. If you navigate over there to in the uh, AWS Management Console, or you can use one of the SDK tools like the PowerShell SDK to list all of your different roles in IAM in your account, then once you run this, that, that will basically reinstall the VPC CNI for AWS. And ultimately that command got my cluster back up and running. So let's head back over here to the logs that I was looking at. And as you can see right down here, I ran the EKS CTL. Um, let's find it down here. It was after I listed all the available add-ons and then right down here, I did another describe nodes. And then after that, I went ahead and ran EKS CTL create add-on right here. And once it did this, it says successfully created add-on. So once I successfully redeployed the VPC add-on, the CNI, you can see that when I do a describe nodes right after that, looks like I still got that message briefly here. And then if I scroll down a little bit further, if I run kubectl get nodes, you can actually see that the nodes have changed from the not ready status into the ready status. So now these nodes are healthy. And if I do a kubectl uh, get pods on the namespace cube system, that should show that all of my core pods are running. So yeah, we've got AWS node is up and running. That's what runs on each of the nodes um, in your cluster. We've got core DNS up and running here as well. That snapshot controller component is also up and running. So as soon as we resolved that message that we found in the logs here for the nodes, we were then able to get our cluster back into a healthy state right here. So that's kind of the story behind this uh, troubleshooting investigation that I did to get, get these nodes that were non-functional back into a healthy state and make sure that my cluster is going to work normally. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.